Gerald Side, the Wall Street Journal's Washington bureau chief, joins us now. Good morning to you. Uh, Jerry, what do these appointments and the staffing structure suggest to you uh, about what Donald Trump is thinking? Well, two things, I think. One, I think we were finding out that while there's been a lot of attention focused on the cabinet picks, you're going to have a very powerful White House here. You have climate change, uh, Middle East peace, a whole series of issues in cybersecurity, where it, it appears the locus of power is going to be in the Trump White House, not necessarily with those cabinet members we've all been focusing on. The second thing is, and I think this is something we've learned about Donald Trump generally, he approaches every issue like a negotiation. There's posturing, there's movement, uh, there's sometimes uh, statements that seem to be out on the edge. I think, as in the case of Middle East peace, a lot of this is about positioning yourself for a negotiation and a deal. This is the guy who wrote The Art of the Deal, after all. Jerry, we have, though, seen Donald Trump break ranks with tradition in uh, really uh, not speaking with one voice as uh, yeah. breaking with the uh, Obama administration on Israel, on China, on Russia. What's the impact of that? Well, you know, I, I do think it's probably left President Obama a little frustrated and probably a little underpowered in his final few weeks in office. Uh, it is a break with tradition. As you said, there are a whole series of issues where uh, uh, previous presidents-elect might have kept their silence. Uh, he's spoken out. He spoke out in particular on the U.N. resolution uh, condemning Israeli settlements on the West Bank. But, you know, people have forgotten he also spoke up about how to handle uh, the incident in which the Chinese Navy sealed, uh, stole, uh, essentially, a U.S. Navy drone, uh, said how that ought to be handled as well via Twitter. So I think the combination of speaking out and then doing so uh, via 140 characters on Twitter have uh, <laughs> left everybody a little, uh, a little uh, taken aback, I think. I've never seen this before. Jerry, do you think his pick to handle international negotiations will open up new concerns about conflict of interest? Uh, what do you make of that pick? Well, look, I think the concern on the part of the people uh, who worry about uh, Israeli-Palestinian peace, and you're going to hear this from Secretary Kerry, I think, in coded language today, probably in his speech, has more to do with the substance of what's going on here. We're back to basics. We're back to people saying, should there be uh, a U.S. condemnation of settlements uh, on the West Bank? Uh, should the U.S. Embassy be moved from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? Uh, should there really be a two-state solution? That's been All those things have been sort of basic tenets of U.S. Middle East policy for the last couple of decades. Donald Trump has managed to throw all of them open to question right now. And so I think more than style of negotiation, we're back to what are the positions of the U.S. in a Trump administration on these key issues on, uh, on Israeli-Palestinian peace questions. Jerry Seib of The Wall Street Journal. Jerry, thanks. Thanks.